Marion Tinsley was the greatest checkers player to ever live, and the statistics back that up completely. He never lost a world title match, not including the 1994 match against Chinook, and he only lost a mere handful of games from 1950 all the way through the 1990s. Tinsley was the human embodiment of checkers perfection. So it's extremely, extremely rare that he would make any mistakes, which is why the blunder in the 1958 World Championship match against Derek Oldbury might be considered the biggest in all of Checkers history. Tinsley defeated Walter Hellman three years earlier for the world title, and he was challenged by Oldbury, who was dominating the Great Britain Checkers scene. The first part of the match was to take place at the St. Bridges Institute in Midtown London, and in 1958, the building was still undergoing repairs from damage inflicted in World War II. Game 1 began on May 12th at 2 p.m. with Tinsley handling the red pieces and Oldbury playing white. And the opening they balloted was 9-14, 22-17, and 5-9. Now, I've covered one variation of this fascinating opening in a previous video, but there's another variation that these two grandmasters play, which is also extremely instructive. So, Oldbury plays the 17-13, Tinsley follows up with 1-5, and then Oldbury plays this 24-19 variation, also very strong and also popular during this time period. 25-22, which I show in another video, is also popular, and 23-19 as well. But this 24-19 is a very good variation. So Tinsley counters with 11-16. 11-15 is sound, but 11-16 is stronger. This is another situation where a flanking defense is the best case scenario here. Oldbury is going to follow up with 25-22, and then Tinsley takes the 14-17 break, and the 2 for 2. Now I'm going to pause here. The typical reply, at least intuitively, would be this center capture of 29-22. However, this 30-21 jump is taken. Now it looks very unnatural and also counterintuitive. Not only is it directed toward the side of the board, but it also creates an immediate weakness with this column here. Center captures, of course, are typically best, but checkers is a game of exceptions, and this is one of those exceptions in which the side capture isn't bad at all. In fact, this side capture was taken in two major events at that time, they were recent in the 1946 National at Indianapolis between Walter Hellman and Kenneth Grover, and then again in the 1948 World Championship match between Asa Long and Hellman. So Tinsley is going to look to do some damage with that column there by going 10-14, threatening 14-18 next. So Oldbury here is more or less forced to play 26-22, so that is no longer a threat. Tinsley goes 7-10. Oldbury plays 28-24 first. Now you can play 22-17 first, which is the typical transposition here, but this 28-24 is deceptive and a very good move by Oldbury. Tinsley plays 3-7. Now you have the 22-17, 7-11, and now we have this 1915 pitch. Oldbury is hoping to break up that elbow, so White will get an immediate king. So Tinsley takes the one piece, so he goes up piece instead of breaking up that elbow. And then Oldbury again stops that piece from advancing by going 29-25. Tinsley then goes 16-20. And Oldbury is going to go 23-19, looking to strike next and disrupt that elbow to get a king. Tinsley goes 8-11, and now we have that elbow breakup. So red is going to jump twice, 
and white is going to get a king. Now keep in mind, we've talked about before how position beats possession. White is in a pretty strong position here, but red is also up a piece. So both sides need to be a little careful. Tinsley waits with 4-8, and Oldbury exchanges his king off to get free access to all of the back row. Tinsley goes 11-15, Oldbury crowns, and 8-11 here. And this is a critical, critical juncture in the game. In a letter dated May 17th to his good friend Richard Fortman, and Fortman is also considered to be one of the greatest annotators of all time. Tinsley wrote the following to him. The play was proceeding along published play lines until the late mid-game when he surprised me with his king instead of the usual 31-26. This is the move Tinsley's referring to, bringing the king out 2-7 to seven instead of 31-26. Tinsley continues to write, As I was a piece up, I mistakenly thought he was conceding the draw after the exchange and the return two for one. So I played 5-9, completely overlooking the fact that it left him not the two for one, but a three for one and my immediate resignation. My worst blunder in eight years. Derek later mentioned 1822, which I didn't even consider. The blunder Tinsley is referring to was against Alex Cameron back in the 1950 National at Paxton, Illinois. So this 5-9 blunder was absolutely sensational at the time, making headlines in the London newspapers, and still to this day is shown as an example that even Tinsley is capable of albeit very, very rarely, of making a mistake of falling into a three-for-one. Tinsley did go on to defeat Oldbury in this match, only losing just this one game. So given the context of it all, and Tinsley considered an unstoppable force even back in 1958, is this the biggest blunder in all of Checkers history? Certainly there have been other blunders over the course of time, but expectations for Tinsley are truly otherworldly, which is why this one really stands out. Special thanks to Zoe Zapp's Checker Player program, which I used for the interface in this video, and I highly recommend checking it out. I'm including a link in the description to follow. Thanks, as always, for watching.